Which is best? The War of the Spark Mythic Edition versus the Japanese alternate art Planeswalkers. Throughout my many reviews of many products and accessories, one mantra I have always maintained is that many different Magic the Gathering players have many different Magic the Gathering needs. It's never been about a best overall product or value so much as understanding which is the best product or best value for you, the player. What meets your needs? In my videos, I offer my evaluation, but at the end of the day, it is just that, my own. The grade that matters is the one you give, because it is your money you are spending. Well, with War of the Spark, there's not one, but two high-end bling products for you to peruse. Both unique, both flashy, both bling, and both expensive. And also, both cardboard. So while some players may be fortunate or just lucky enough to add both to their collections, most will likely find themselves having to choose between the two, assuming, of course, they have the means to even obtain one. These two items, of course, are the War of the Spark Mythic Edition, featuring eight super art foil planeswalkers from throughout Magic's history, including such chase cards as Jace the Mind Sculptor and Ugin the Spirit Dragon, and the incredible surprise announcement of 36 Japanese alternate art planeswalkers, illustrated by famous Japanese artists of manga, anime, and other noteworthy inclusions. Now, I'll be doing my usual, is it worth it to buy, detailed analysis with emphasis on financial worth when they're actually available and in my hands, but, I wanted to make this video to offer a more commentary-based examination of the two products in relation to one another instead of in isolation from one another. Which is better? Let's begin with the War of the Spark Mythic Edition. When Wizards of the Coast casually announced that for the third set in a row, there would be a mythic edition of foil, alternate art planeswalkers from throughout Magic's history, available in limited, read unlimited, supply via direct online sales, I felt not only underwhelmed, but cynical, eh, more so than usual. This again? Don't get me wrong, there's a lot about the Mythic Editions that I like. Reprinting old cards? Check. I always love that. Alternate artwork? Check. Even though the super art style here has always been both somewhat restrained and also made less impressive by terrible foiling, but some of my favorite things in this game are special alternate art cards and, of course, reprints. But what has bothered me about the Mythic Edition from the start is that these cards have been perceived by myself and a lot of the larger Magic community as essentially being masterpieces, which, since their inception until the very recent removal, were available in regular booster packs that you get through regular means, from pre-release to just purchasing them at your local game store. Whether that perception is fair or not is kind of beside the point. That simply is how I and many, many others do view them. After Ixalan, we could have been told masterpieces will return as Planeswalker masterpieces throughout the next several Ravnica sets, and they'll be included randomly in booster packs, and everyone who plays Magic, whether cracking packs for draft or at pre-release or in a bundle or even just for fun, will have equal chance to receive one. But instead of that, these Planeswalker masterpieces were taken from the free inclusion in booster packs, packaged as a product, not offered to local game stores whatsoever, and sold directly to players at first only through the USA, through the crime against humanity known as the Hasbro Toy Store, and then later worldwide through eBay. What effect does this have on the product? Does player dissatisfaction and frustration about the means of distribution have any role in terms of whether the product itself is quality, is desired, or at the very least, proper bling? Yes, 
I would argue it does. These are meant to be premium collectibles, but it isn't a premium collectible if everyone can just click a button and buy one. Distribution is essentially unlimited, which dramatically negates the extent to which this is indeed premium or even coveted. Yes, masterpieces like the Zendikar Expeditions or Kaladesh Inventions have value in terms of the cards being reprinted and the amazing and unique art style, but part of their allure was just how rare and hard it was to get a hold of them. Take that set of Zendikar Expedition Fetchlands and sell all 10 on eBay for $69.99, and suddenly they aren't so special anymore. And that's exactly what we are seeing with the unlimited Mythic Edition sales on eBay. Now, I'm not getting into heavy financials here. That's for my Is It Worth It To Buy video. But let's do a quick compare and contrast between the previous two Mythic Editions. Both sold for $250 a box and within a very short time of one another. The one offered on the Hasbro store, Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition, which was the one that was significantly harder to get, is currently selling for, wow, over $600 a box. It hasn't even been a year yet. In contrast, the Ravnica Allegiance Mythic Edition, and keep in mind these are literally one set, a few months essentially, apart from one another, is currently selling for less than half of its predecessor at just barely $300. That's really almost still selling for what eBay sold it for initially at $250. Now, you can argue that better planeswalkers were included in the Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition, and that is a fair thing to factor in. But nonetheless, I would argue that the main reason demand is so much higher for the original set of eight is simply that this original set of eight was extremely hard to get a hold of. The ease of clicking a button on eBay for worldwide distribution with a seemingly unlimited number available within a large window of time just isn't going to hold the same value as a small amount, which sold out within one hour, for a distribution to the United States only, and then a sputtering, limited follow-up of sales at GPs exclusively through Channel Fireball. Had the Mythic Edition cards been randomly inserted into War of the Spark packs, then yes, it would be an extraordinary collector's item to crack open an alternate art Jace the Mind Sculptor. As it is, it is a direct sale of a card while still bling, the least desirable bling of those cards. Wizards made serious dough selling the Mythic Editions, but it also made an exclusive collector's piece not so exclusive in doing so. In contrast, the Japanese alternate art Planeswalker cards to be included in Japanese booster packs of War of the Spark are quite literally like nothing we have ever seen. Or nearly as the only thing that comes close was the extremely popular Japanese language Jace vs. Chandra that featured alternate manga style art of its face cards. For War of the Spark, Wizards of the Coast commissioned Japanese artists to create alternate art for each of the 36 planeswalkers in the set. What's more, they didn't just hire random Japanese artists, but a plethora of talent. Respected artists, including Yoshitaka Amano of Final Fantasy fame. Each one is a unique and special piece, depending on the artist who illustrated it. In striking contrast to the Mythic Edition, these alternate versions appear randomly in Japanese language War of the Spark boosters, replacing the regular version of the Planeswalker in the pack 50% of the time. So here you have a promo not like any other, in that the artwork and style is in serious breaking from the extreme conformity of regular Magic the Gathering pieces. Each card is like a fingerprint of its artist, giving the card distinction and individuality that players themselves like to capture and express via the cards they select for their decks. And they appear in War of the Spark booster packs at a scarcity rate not as extreme as Masterpieces did, but I actually like that as I felt most Masterpieces were a bit too scarce. They are just rare enough to give a great deal of weight and pursuit to them without being 
being ridiculously unlikely to ever show up in your own hands. You know, as I look at this, it's almost like Wizards of the Coast is doing an experiment in terms of distribution of premium collector's pieces, at least as far as these two are concerned. One of them is a direct purchase through eBay, and the other is seeded into the normal means of playing the game. Booster packs, and they're also going to be putting one out of every four in Friday Night Magic promo packs to help provide options to those who don't have access to Japanese boosters. Are they putting the Mythic Edition Planeswalkers from this and the previous sets in one out of every four Friday Night Magic promo packs? Why not? Because they want you to go to eBay and just buy it directly from them. The promo packs would get you out to your local game store, and that is the one that I support more. Now, that's not to say that the alternate art Japanese Planeswalkers are without their flaws. The biggest one is that they're only in Japanese booster packs, and I really disagree with this. I think that they should have been put in all booster packs, all War of the Spark booster packs, whether it be in English or Portuguese, what have you. And there's a lot of debate about whether the language should have universally been Japanese on these cards. Should they have had some English language text, that's besides the point. I'm focusing on availability, and my chief complaint about these, it is a minor one though, is that they are not available in all boosters. It should be offered globally. I've always felt that for any special promotion, if it's just USA only, that's unfair. And in this case, just being Japan only, it's going to limit access. We should all get a fair shot. Pricing and finance for the alternate art Japanese pieces is still slightly nebulous. And again, I'll have an entire video devoted to this once the product actually is out and available. But early indications seem to be that a set of 35 of the 30 six planeswalkers, basically all of them except the highly coveted Amano Liliana, is likely to run in the $250 range, which interestingly enough is the same price as the War of the Spark Mythic Edition, really pitting these two things against one another. But Unlike the War of the Spark Mythic Edition, which can only be purchased for $250 on eBay, the alternate art Japanese planeswalkers have more fair and organic options in addition to you just buying it off the secondary market, utilizing distribution through booster packs and Friday Night Magic promos. You are getting more for your money here in every sense of the word. More cards, more unique and distinct art, and, like we want with most premium collector's pieces, a true premium in the form that these are not just being directly sold to people from Hasbro. Thus, ultimately, in my own evaluation, the alternate art planeswalkers are almost everything a premium collector's item should be. While not perfect, they have both form and substance, and as a result will have lasting value. The Mythic Edition, in contrast, is hollow. It was designed not to be a special collector's piece, but to cash in on special collector's piece, to cash in on collectors, and its implementation and distribution is the most corporate cynicism out there. I sincerely hope that this is the last Mythic Edition we see like this, but given the literal millions of dollars Hasbro earns off of these, I doubt very much it will be. If anything, I imagine corporate suits demanding to know why these Japanese alternate art planeswalkers weren't just packaged and sold via eBay instead of being put into packs and offered as Friday Night Magic promos. But that is just my evaluation, and with any product, be it collector's pieces or magic accessory, the ultimate evaluation is your own. I hope in this analysis and discussion, I have aided you in making that conclusion and coming to an informed decision to ensure that the money you spend gets you the product that makes you the happiest. So now I want to hear from you. If you could only get one of these two products, same price, complete, which one would you want? Would it be the Japanese alternate art Planeswalkers or the War of the Spark Mythic Edition? Why is that the one you choose of the two? Let me know in the comments below, or perhaps neither of these appeal to you. What would you have liked to see instead? Share your thoughts, because I'm not the only one listening. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.